Good friend of mine, coming from Wilmington, North Carolina. Give it up for Bridget Callahan. Keep it going for the most dimply nice guy, Garrick. Oh my God, that's a fire set. He's so nice. Oh man, he was talking about Denver. I I used to live in Denver, and it was making me think about how I. Uh, first of all, I have to apologize. I'm the most underdressed, unattractive comic <laughs> on the stage tonight. Everyone else has been so fucking hot, haven't they? Way too hot. Thank you. Thank you. In my fucking torrid sweatshirt and orthopedic shoes because I worked retail for 20 years. <laughs> but no, when I moved to Denver, man, I, I had the worst luck on the dating apps in Denver. It was ridiculous because every guy that asked me out would ask me to go skiing on the first date. Y'all can see me up here. My Tinder profile was very honest. Do I look like I've ever been skiing in my fucking life, right? <laughs> I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, which is the land of the potato women and not known for its skiing. <laughs> Our winter sport was stepping over pigeons frozen to the sidewalk and I was not great at that either. And finally, after like the third or fourth time this happened, I was like, maybe skiing means something I don't know about, right? <laughs> So I went to Urban Dictionary <laughs> and I looked it up and there are 12 definitions of skiing and the first 11 are all cocaine related. We knew that, right? <laughs> but the 12th definition of skiing was sitting bitch in a pickup truck while jerking two guys off. So it turns out I was a skiing expert after all. <laughs> I'm in Atlanta in a long ass time, guys. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. I think the last time was back in 2006, and I went and some guy, uh, I put on sexy lingerie, and he took up pictures of me in front of graffiti in front of train tracks. <laughs> and I feel like that was the most Atlanta experience I could have possibly had in 2006. Today, I went to go see the Dollhead Trail. Do you guys know what that is? Yeah, some of you do. It's a, it's a trail around a really, really creepy lake where people just leave baby doll heads and like piles of stuff. Like Atlanta, are you okay? Did you come out of the pandemic okay? I know none of us are okay, but maybe, maybe be a little bit more okay. It was, it was weird. Uh, I am 43, I'm recently 43. Thank you, thanks. You know, it's so interesting because before when I was 42, people would be like, you look so good for 42. And now, like I say, a, a week after I turned 43, a lady was like, you're just so well preserved. <laughs> I was like, thank you, I don't have any kids. <laughs> I don't have any kids and I do lots of drugs. That's how you do that, so you keep it going. It's very solidly middle-aged, you know? Like I know some people will be like, that's not old, but like, Nobody who's done as many whippets as me ever lives past 82, you know? Like, I have, I've peaked over there. And it's, it's been a little weird, honestly. There's a lot of, like, myths about being older that I am coming to find out are not true, right? Like, somebody told me that, uh, actually, you get hornier in your 40s. I didn't know that. I've been waiting for the horniness to die down. I've been cock crazy my whole life. I was like, after 40, I'll write a book or something. No, you know? <laughs> They also told me I'd be infertile after 30. They were like, oh no, it'll be so hard to get pregnant. I have 47 year old friends who are getting accidentally pregnant. Yeah, with like healthy, happy children, the kind that live. It's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> so bad, so bad. <laughs> I'm okay, I know you're worried. I'm okay, I have an IUD. Does anyone else have their an IUD? Yeah, I love it, I love mine. I have a little name for it, I call her Polly. Uh, <laughs> the reason I love it, I'll, I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. So the reason I love my IUD is because it's a little tiny hanger that you put inside your body so you don't have to use a large hanger later. Right? That's the kind of synchronicity that makes me believe in God. I was like, that's amazing. I'm gonna give you guys another example of some synchronous shit. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I'm not worried about getting old. Honestly, like, I just, I didn't want kids, I didn't want a house, I didn't want a career, I just wanted to kind of like, get along until I died, and that plan's going fine. So I'm good on that. 
But the thing I'm worried about is I don't want to get so old that I find myself having to use lube. It's nothing against lube. It's the flavors of lube that throw me off, right? It's always something like bend me over banana. I have daddy issues cherry vanilla, you know, something like that. I think if it tasted a little bit more like what I was expecting when I usually have sex, so something like late night taco. Yes. <laughs> Held my pee in too long at the club pineapple, right? <laughs> Don't kiss me there, PBR. That's a really big one. That's a big one. <laughs> so I'm worried about getting dry, and in the meantime, what I've noticed is that I am dating guys in their 40s, and there's something about guys in their 40s that their salivary glands just kick into overdrive. They just become full of spit. It's like making out with a goldfish on Molly or a drunk St. Bernard, just, bleh, just pouring down their face the whole time. And I have a theory that it's why they all grow beards, <laughs> is for soaking up the extra spit. This guy is confirming my theory right here. I said that at a show one time and a guy in the back was like, it's for soaking up the pussy juice. And I was like, you're wearing a Jurassic Park t-shirt. No one believes you. <laughs> so, go tell your ultimate Frisbee league. See if they buy it. But in, then somebody pointed out, they're like, yeah, but the lube joke and that it's like, that's biology, right? Is that, oh, you're getting drier and guys' mouths are getting wetter. And I was like, that's amazing. That is synchronicity right there. I love that. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw this out at you guys. I can't tell if I got the light. I got a light a minute ago. I don't know if it was the royal light. But we're gonna go with this show. It's just, this show is going, right? You guys are still going? Yeah. So I'm gonna leave you with this thought that I just had yesterday as I was sitting around uh, thinking about going to see baby heads on trails. Um, it's a Halloween. Are you guys excited for Halloween? Yeah. So you'll appreciate this, it's a Halloween thought. Um, do you know the reason that all the ghosts that you hear of are all like Victorian age ghosts, right? Because it's always like, oh, they lived in like the 1890s or something and they died, right? And I was like, why is that when, when all ghosts appeared? It's because everybody was burning coal in their house and they all had carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> And they were installing electricity for the first time, which was uninsulated, so that gives you a little prickling on the back of your thought. That's why all ghosts are Victorian. And I started thinking about it. I was like, oh, that also is like, what if everything in our culture is a side effect of something killing you, you know? Because the reason we have the Fox News generation is lead poisoning. That's true. <laughs> They had lead in car exhaust until 1979. Y'all have just lost IQ points left and right. And now we have QAnon. So, yeah. <laughs> you guys have been a lot of fun. You're going to love the next comics. I've been Bridget Callahan. Have a good night. Give it over, Bridget Callahan, everybody. Hell yeah. All right, guys.